part 1 the various production activities in the primary secondary and tertiary sectors produce a very large number of goods and services also the three sectors have a large number of people working in them to produce these goods and services. The next step therefore is to see how many goods and services are produced and how many people work in each sector. In an economy there could be one or more sectors which are dominant in terms of total production and employment while other sectors are relatively small in size. Production Part 2 How do we count the various goods and services and know the total production in each sector With so many thousands of goods and services produced, you might think this is an impossible task. Not only would the task be enormous, you might also wonder how we can add up cars and computers and nails and furniture. It won't make sense. You are right in thinking so. To get around this problem, economists suggest that the values of goods and services should be used rather than adding up the actual numbers. For example, if 10,000 kilograms of wheat is sold at rupees 8 per kg, the value of wheat will be rupees 80,000. The value of 5000 coconuts at rupees 10 per coconut will be rupees 50000. Similarly, the value of goods and services in the three sectors are calculated and then added up. Remember, there is one precaution one has to take. Not every good or service that is produced and sold needs to be counted. It makes sense only to include the final goods and services. Take for instance a farmer who sells wheat to a flour mill for rupees 8 per kg. The mill grinds the wheat and sells the flour to a biscuit company for rupees 10 per kg. The biscuit company uses the flour and things such as sugar and oil to make 4 packets of biscuits. It sells biscuits in the market to the consumers for rupees 60 or rupees 15 per packet. Biscuits are the final goods, that is, goods that reach the consumers. Why are only final goods and services counted? In contrast to final goods, goods such as wheat and the wheat flour in this example are intermediate goods. Intermediate goods are used up in producing final goods and services. The value of final goods already includes the value of all the intermediate goods that are used in making the final good.
Hence, the value of rupees 60 for the biscuits, which are the final good, already includes the value of flour at rupees 10. Similarly, the value of all other intermediate goods would have been included. To count the value of flour and wheat separately is therefore not correct because then we would be counting the value of the same things a number of times. First as wheat, then as flour and finally as biscuits. The value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year. And the sum of production in the three sectors gives what is called the gross domestic product or GDP of a country. It is the value of all the final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year. GDP shows how big the economy is. In India, the mammoth task of measuring GDP is undertaken by a central government ministry. This ministry, with the help of various government departments of all the Indian states and union territories, collects information relating to total volume of goods and services and their prices and then estimates the GDP. Generally, it has been noted from the histories of many now developed countries that at initial stages of development primary sector was the most important sector of economic activity. As the methods of farming changed and agriculture sector began to prosper, it produced much more food than before. Many people could now take up other activities. There were now increasing number of craftspersons and traders. Buying and selling activities increased many times. Besides, there were also transporters administrators, army, etc. However, at this stage, most of the goods produced were natural products from the primary sector and most people were also employed in this sector. Over a long time, more than a hundred years and especially because new methods of manufacturing were introduced, factories came up and started expanding. Those people who had earlier worked on farms now began to work in factories in large numbers. People began to use many more goods that were produced in factories at cheap rates. Secondary sector gradually became the most important in total production and employment. Hence, over time, a shift had taken place. This means that the importance of the sectors had changed.
in the past 100 years there has been a further shift from secondary to tertiary sector in developed countries the service sector has become the most important in terms of total production most of the working people are also employed in the service sector This is a general pattern observed in developed countries.